Trevor Williams will get the ball for the Mets tonight trying to shake off the effects of a rough start against Texas his last time out. You know Gary this is not going to be an easy series. The Marlins are the best version of themselves right now playing great baseball and a swing and a miss and Williams strikes him out to start the night. He's he's not fearful of using that fastball and he swings through the fastball for strike three and Trevor Williams has a one two three opening inning with a couple of strikeouts. We meet Daniel Castano pitching in his eighth game making his fifth start so a little bit like Trevor Williams in the sense that he's been a swing man for the Marlins. Yeah, he doesn't strike out often and Castano doesn't rack up many K's but uh, well that's why you play the game one down Castano deals swing and a little looping pop up behind second that's going to fall into center field a base hit Starling Marte is now hit in seven straight popped up. Shallow right, long run Wendell, and he will get there. And to reach up at the last moment, long run for him and Garcia. I don't know if Garcia saw it right off the bat unless he was playing on the warning track. Alonzo first ball hitting, pops one up, shallow left center, Miggy's out, Sanchez in, and the center fielder makes the one hand grab to set down the side here in the bottom of the first. So Williams has retired the first four, and now obviously Ayo Garcia. And he strikes out Garcia. Three strikeouts in the first five batters for Trevor Williams. And Sanchez flies one to shallow right. And Marte in a few strides. And that retires the side. Six up and six down for Trevor Williams to start his night. No score in the second. 1-1 one, one to McNeil is a ground ball into the shift on the right side. It is fielded by Wendell who throws to first. And that's all for McNeil. Miggy's hitting 343 in his last 21 games beginning June 13th. 3 2 to Rojas, a ground ball past the first baseman. Base hit right field down the line. Miggy, an aggressive turn at first. He wants second. Marte the throw. It gets away. Rolls out into left field, but it's backed up by Escobar. It's a good hustle double by Miguel Rojas. He's at second with one out in the third inning. That's hit hard. Lindor with a nice pickup. Handled it with a plum, and he throws out the speedy birdie to end the inning. There's a big time play by Lindor. That ball gets by him, it's a run. But Lindor with a beautiful short hop pick, and he guns down birdie to get Williams through the inning. Like it was nothing, with the seeds flying. No score in the third. One ball, no strikes on J.D. Davis. Castano deals. Davis hits a chopper down the third base line. That's a fair ball bouncing off the tarp and into shallow left field. Davis firing for second base. He'll make it easily. Stand up double for J.D. Davis to lead off the bottom of the third. Line to center. Sanchez coming in makes the catch on the sinking line drive. Good jump by Sanchez. I mean, at the crack of the bat, he took a real nice quick step in, able to make a nice play and take a base hit away from the can. So that's the first out. Davis still at second, and now Nimmo. Brandon struck out his first time up tonight against Castano. Nimmo loops one toward right center field. That's going to get down a base hit. Around third, J.D. Davis will score the first run of the game. Nimmo dives into second. He's got an RBI double. And the Mets take a 1-0 lead. Oh, Bear Myers batting gloves came through there. Brandon Nimmo with a run scoring two-base hit. Lindor batting right-handed his natural side. Pitch. Lindor's a grounder left side. Rojas with a sliding backhand stop. Long throw to first off target, and it gets away down the right field line. That's going to score a run as Nimmo comes home. Lindor goes to second, and the Mets have a 2-0 lead. Rojas with a good play in the hole. It's short to make a sliding stop. But his throw to first was wide and got into the path of the base runner. And I think Lindor inadvertently kicked it down the right field line. So Escobar hit in some hard luck. He's 0 for 2 tonight. And here's Marcana. Little roller, third base side up the line. Might stay fair. The Marlins let it roll. It is a fair ball and a base hit for Marcana. A little swinging bun up the third base side. Canna, who's been desperate for hits lately, happy to get that one's pitch. Line toward left, base hit. Advancing to second is Canna. McNeil has a one-out single, back-to-back -back hits. And the Mets have two on with one out. So now it's J.D. Davis at the plate. Davis, it's a ground ball, base hit into left field. Canna's around third, he's being sent home. Birdie, the left fielder, throws to the plate. It's not in time. Canna slides across home plate safely. RBI single, J.D. Davis. The Mets with three straight hits. To play to run here in the fourth inning. And now a chance for more with James McCann at the plate. And he hits oh. one in the air to deep left field. Back goes Birdie to the warning track. Looking up. It's out of here. James McCann crushes a three run homer. Big hit left.
last night for McCann. Bigger hit tonight. Three run homer James McCann is second of the year and it's six nothing New York. Well you don't see that happen very often the visit by the pitching coach and the next pitch hit out of the ballpark. So here's Sanchez left hand hitter who flied to right his first time. Now Williams deals swing and a drive deep to right center. Nimmo on his horse way back to the track reaches up. He made the catch holds on as his momentum takes him into the fence in right center field to the right of the 408 mark. Boy, if that isn't further proof of how far Brandon Nimmo has come as a center fielder, I don't think we'll get a better example than that. I'll tell you what, Brad, I don't know that there can possibly be a more improved outfielder in this league than Brandon Nimmo, and he even got a hat tip from hmm. Jesus Sanchez. Yeah, it was a pretty good center fielder himself. A great play by Nimmo. Two hopper for Lindor, and he throws low, and Alonzo grabs that one. Anderson retired. Infield over shifted for Escobar. That's hit into the shift and Wendell uh, boots it and then drops it. Wendell had it. Recovered it. Would have had a play. But then dropped it a second time. Here's Kenna. And a liner to right. In comes Garcia. Falls in front of him. A base hit. And Escobar goes first to third. So Mark Kenna, who was happy just to get the swinging bunt single his last time up, makes much better contact. Well, J.D. Davis needing a big game, and he's had one so far tonight. The 0-1 on the way. Breaking ball hit high in the air, deep to left. Birdie back at the track. There it goes. Home run. Grand slam, J.D. Davis. And the Mets have opened up a 10-0 lead. So J.D., who had been just 3 for 26 coming into this game, is now a triple away from a cycle. His third home run, that's a salami. And the Mets have hit double digits, 10 to nothing, New York. Big Mets fan Kevin James here tonight, the king of Queens. Have we ever figured out why comedians love the Mets? 2-2 two -two coming. And he waves and misses Cooper down on strikes. And Trevor Williams with a season high seven strikeouts, just one shy of his career high. Carved to shallow right. McNeil out, diving, can't quite make the play. Aguilar is going to try and lumber to second challenging Marte and the scoop and the tag and he's out. What a terrible play by Aguilar. For Reed his first big league outing since June the 15th. Yeah this would be a good outing for him to put up a couple of scoreless here. Get that ERA down. The 1-1 one -one hit high in the air to right field charging in Marte now towards the line he's under it makes the catch put it in the books. The Mets face only one batter over the minimum in recording their 12th shutout of the year. James McCann, a three-run home run, a grand slam from J.D. Davis, and seven brilliant innings from starter Trevor Williams all add up to an easy win for the Mets, so it would appear. 